Hi, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It's the end of April 2017, and I am in the side yard garden supervising the ducklings while they take a bath. And I wanted to make a quick video on Marion berries as long as I'm here standing next to Marion berries. So the side yard garden um, is small. On this side, I have uh, 11 different blueberries. I have half highs in the front and high bush in the rear. Um, they're underplanted with uh, columbine, bearded iris, violets, motherwort, um, arnica montana, um, gobs of other stuff, um, sea bear, uh, excuse me, um, sea kale, um, uh, just loads of things. And then there's also some like peonies and pretty things tucked in in between them. And then on this side of the yard, I have a quince tree here. Um, and then here I have uh, red raspberries, a variety is amity. The wind has knocked some of them down and I need to kind of restring them. Uh, the raspberries are underplanted with um, mojito mint and um, also uh, violets as well. And then I have a young gumi berry here as a nitrogen fixer um, to feed the raspberries. And then on the other side, I have um, the other side of this gumi berry, I have a marion berry. This is a Marion berry, and it is one plant down here at the bottom. And um, that one plant would keep going another, it will go all the way down to the end if I let it. Um, and I train it this way and a little bit behind the gummy. Um, underneath our, um, well, was a strawberry patch and then it got mulched so heavily that most of the strawberries died and I'm going to be replanting it. There's also some clover and other things that are starting to come up. In here but it'll be replanted probably with strawberries so okay marion berry um genus rubus um it is the marion berry is um a thornless blackberry that was um produced by oregon state university it is a hybrid of uh, or its parentage is shehalem and olali blackberries um, it is nearly thornless. However, I have discovered that if you let any Marion berries fall to the ground and germinate, that those offspring some of the time will be quite thorny. So this is one. Um, my sister had Marion berries in her yard and wanted to remove them because they are quite large and floppy. And so I took a cutting and um, got um, offspring um, from that parent plant that I removed from my sister's. So, okay. Um, so one... Marion berry plant will grow from the ground here and it will send up several shoots. Okay. So Marion berries are very, oh, sorry, there's some bees visiting me. Hi guys. As much as I love bees, I swell up huge if I get stung. So I don't really want to bother them while they're visiting this gummy berry. Okay. So Marion berries, um, they are really floppy and they need a support. They don't have any rigidity to their canes the way that, uh, raspberries do. So you can see the raspberries are going to be more upright and just need help to keep them from flopping over. The Marion berries grow these very long canes that will flop all over the ground. And Marion berries will tip root. So anywhere that the Marion berry um, cane touches the ground, it will root into a new plant. Um, and I saved an example over here. Let me show you really quickly. In the fall, when I pruned back my Marion berry, this piece right here you can see where I've cut them here some of these were all the way down flopping onto the ground and one of them was touching the ground here and I let it um, continue to touch the ground until the spring uh, early excuse me like February and I clipped it back um, and where that cane had touched the ground it actually rooted and formed a new plant and I'm going to dig this up and give it to a friend so if you want to propagate your Marion berries you can tip root them and they'll do fantastic. Um, but if you don't want to propagate them, then you don't want to let the tips touch the ground. So, okay. Um, so growing Marion berries, they fruit on second year wood. So um, all of the canes that were produced last year um, are up here on this top wire. I have two wires, pretty um, good gauge wire here and another one down here. And this is the basic system for training Marion berries. You can train them in more elaborate ways, but this is the most simple way and it's really effective. So all of these guys that are here will fruit this year. 
They will flower and fruit, you can see. There are flower buds already all over the place. And um, what's gonna happen is when these fruit this year, um, they will send off some side shoots and they'll get kind of leggy and weird. And at the end of the season, I will remove everything on this upper level, okay? Throughout the year, any new shoots that come up out of the parent, um, the base, so this one, this one that are just now coming up this spring, this one right here, all of those will get trained along this bottom wire. So that way, throughout the season, I'm being really consistent in separating the new primo canes, the new growth down low, and I'm keeping the fruiting growth from last year that um, up high. So at the end of the season, I'll remove all of these that fruited, okay? And I will take the ones on the bottom row, and they're still really flexible in the fall. And I'll move them up to this row so that the ones that are produced this year will be next year's fruiting canes, okay? So very easy system. Um, it requires maintenance, um, to, you know, uh, periodically throughout the year as these get longer down here, these guys like this, I just will encourage it to grow that way, right? And as it gets longer, I'll just wrap it around and wrap it around and wrap it around. And uh, because it's thornless, I don't need to wear gloves. It, it's not a difficult job to do. And, um, and then again, in the fall, um, these will be completely removed. And it would take me about 20 minutes to remove all of that and to shift this up. So it's really low maintenance. Um, and it's really easy to keep your fruiting canes and your primo canes organized that way. So again, that's Marionberry. This is one plant. Um, and it grows quite uh, vigorously, produces huge long canes. You can tip them, head them back if you want them to be shorter. But it'll fruit consistently all the way down. Um, does like full sun. Um, it's not bothered by much of anything here. I haven't found any diseases that trouble it at all. Um, it is really well pollinated. It's really good bee food. Bees would prefer to feed on blackberries um, pretty much more than anything. And um, yeah, so it is an excellent food plant and an excellent bee food. So double purpose. It also is nice because you can train it against a fence so it doesn't take up very much ground space. The fruit itself is a really large blackberry, very large. However, it's not the world's sweetest blackberry. It is sour. Um, so you wanna get it when there's no hint of redness left whatsoever on the Marionberry when it's really dark black and purple. Um, they're really good for cooking and for making jam. They have a good ratio of pulp to seeds so, so the Invasive Himalayan blackberries have lots of, very seedy for not very much pulp. And that means you have to strain a lot of seeds out to make jam. Marionberries have a lot of flesh um, to seed ratio. So uh, again, that's Marionberry. Um, it is um, and produced here in Oregon, does very well in our climate, but also is tolerant of a wide range of climatic conditions. Um, planted in full sun, it'll give you a good crop of really large purple berries every year. So I hope that helps. I hope you learned a little bit about training it. If you liked my video, please click like and please subscribe to my channel. And I'll be back in a few days with a new video. Thank you.